Welcome to the Luxicon channel. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey through one of South Asia's hidden gems. Bhutan, nestled snugly between India and China, boasts landscapes that will leave you spellbound. But what sets this country apart isn't just its stunning scenery, it's also renowned as the happiest nation on earth. Unlike traditional absolute monarchies, Bhutan has forged its own unique path to happiness. So what's their secret? Let's delve into the enchanting world of Bhutan. Known as the Land of the Thunder Dragon, a moniker proudly represented on its national flag by a majestic white dragon. This symbol embodies the purity and steadfast spirit of the Bhutanese people, captured in the dragon's defiant pose a roar symbolizing their historical resilience against external domination. Central to Bhutan's identity is a profound philosophy of peace upheld by its monarchs. This ethos prioritizes harmony and diplomacy, fostering a reputation that has garnered international respect and admiration. However, the country's unique geographical setting has also played a pivotal role in its independence. Situated at an average elevation of 3,279 meters above sea level, Bhutan is a land characterized by towering mountains, pristine valleys, and rugged landscapes. Its highest peak, Gangkar Puinsum, standing at an impressive 7,570 meters, remains unconquered, earning it the distinction of being the world's highest unclimbed mountain. The challenging terrain and remote location have historically shielded Bhutan from external forces, contributing significantly to its status as one of the few nations never colonized. Despite its modest size, spanning 38,394 square kilometers, Bhutan supports a relatively dense population. As of 2012, approximately 742,737 people call this mountainous kingdom home making it one of the more densely populated countries in South Asia relative to its land area. Ethnically, Bhutan is a mosaic of cultures, with the majority of its population belonging to the Ngalup community. Descendants of Tibetan settlers who migrated to Bhutan in the 9th century, the Ngalup brought with them Tibetan Buddhism, which remains the dominant religion today. Their language, Dzongkha, derived from ancient Tibetan, serves as Bhutan's official language, unifying the nation across its diverse landscapes. Additionally, Bhutan is home to a significant Nepali population, enriching its cultural diversity and contributing to its vibrant tapestry of traditions and heritage. The Ngallup people adhere to a matrilineal system where lineage is traced through the mother's side. However, this tradition is distinct from the practices of polyandry and polygamy observed in Bhutanese families. Women are allowed to have multiple husbands, but under the condition that only one husband is formally recognized. This tradition has been passed down through generations and is accepted without stigma, unlike in some other cultures. Economic reasons also play a role, as it helps prevent the division of assets and wealth among multiple heirs. It is common for women to marry brothers within a family to maintain property and ensure mutual support. In households with multiple husbands, responsibilities are shared, with each husband taking on roles such as farming, domestic work, childcare, and cooking. This practice is influenced by the scarcity of productive land, which does not match the country's population density. Similar traditions are also practiced in the Himalayan region, not just in Bhutan, Interestingly, the government of Bhutan officially recognizes and permits these practices. Even the fourth king, Jigme Singye Wangchuk, practiced polygamy by marrying four sisters in 1979. What's intriguing is that despite the privilege of polygamy being traditionally granted to kings, King Jigme Singye's son, Jigme Kesar, chose to forego this privilege. At the age of 24, he became Bhutan's youngest king in 2006, succeeding his father's abdication. His decision was influenced by love. At the age of 17, he had already fallen for a beautiful girl named Jetson Pima. 
who was just seven at the time. Promising to marry her when she came of age, they eventually married in 2011. Jetson Pimi became the youngest and notably beautiful queen consort in Bhutanese history. Beyond his romantic tale, the fifth king's striking appearance sparked international media buzz. During his visit to the Thai king's birthday, Thai media affectionately dubbed him the Handsome Prince. Similarly, at UN forums, all eyes were drawn to his youthful charm, often likened to a harmonious coupling. But beyond his captivating presence, let's delve into the reforms initiated by this handsome dragon king during his 40th birthday in 2020. He asked his people for a special gift to adopt stray dogs whose numbers had surged that year. He also encouraged tree planting, waste management, and recycling efforts. On his 33rd birthday, he celebrated in a hospital, playing with children and distributing cakes and toys to brighten their day. Yet the most transformative reforms were spearheaded by his father. Despite initial resistance, he championed the transition from absolute monarchy to democracy since the 1970s. Central to his reign has been the advocacy of gross national happiness, GNH, as a measure of citizen well-being, prioritizing happiness over economic metrics like gross domestic product, GDP. This philosophy underscores his belief in holistic prosperity for his people. This small nation even initiated International Day of Happiness in 2012, celebrated every March 20th. Recognizing happiness as a crucial measure of national progress, Bhutan has embraced this concept wholeheartedly. According to Kumparan, a study in 2015 revealed that approximately 91.2% of Bhutanese people reported feeling happy. However, global rankings tell a slightly different story. In 2019, Bhutan was ranked 95th out of 156 countries, a decline of 16 spots from 2015. This variation is due to differing calculation methodologies, where global indices often emphasize factors like GDP. In 2019, Bhutan's GDP was 3,316 US dollars per capita, significantly lower compared to countries like Finland with 48,000 US dollars. Yet GDP is just one of 43 indicators used to measure happiness in Bhutan. Other indicators include the health of its ecosystems. In Bhutan, tigers are meticulously protected as apex predators crucial for ecosystem balance. A 2020 study highlighted Bhutan's good air quality, with carbon emissions below zero and forest cover maintained at an impressive 70%. In addition, there are fascinating daily habits in Bhutan that may influence the country's high happiness levels. Bhutanese people are notably disconnected from gadgets and the internet. Until 1999, Bhutan remained the last country to introduce television. The streets are tranquil, with rugged terrains dominating the landscape. Homelessness is virtually non-existent. Those who lose their homes can seek help from the monarchy, which provides land to build new dwellings. Traffic lights are sparse, reflecting the minimal vehicular presence that keeps pollution levels low. Education and healthcare are free, and the government has established a ministry of happiness dedicated to the mental well-being of its citizens. Article 9 of the Constitution specifically mandates the promotion of happiness. Remarkably, Bhutan does not maintain a standing army, relying instead on a royal guard. Its Navy and Air Force are trained by India, which also supplies weaponry and equipment. Daily physical activity in challenging terrain is a norm, reflecting the belief that a healthy mind resides in a strong body. Interestingly, Bhutanese philosophy embraces an ironic approach to happiness. Rather than pursuing worldly pleasures, Bhutanese people contemplate death at least five times daily. This practice, far from inducing depression, helps them appreciate life's small joys each day. They utilize their remaining time to engage in activities that bring personal and communal happiness. The teachings of Tibetan Buddhism play a significant role as well. Belief in reincarnation motivates them to accumulate good karma. The serene teachings of Buddha instill an awareness that sadness and happiness are integral parts of life. 
to be embraced rather than avoided. Physically, the people of Bhutan embrace simplicity, often donning their traditional attire. Men wear the go, similar to a knee-length kimono fastened with a belt called a kira. Women wear the kira, a wraparound skirt secured at the waist. Becky Tumbu had the opportunity to try these during her visit, paired elegantly with long sleeve blouses in vibrant colors and symmetrical or striped patterns. Their young queen looks stunning in traditional dress, doesn't she? When it comes to cuisine, Bhutanese meals are rich in protein rather than carbohydrates, spiced with vegetables, traditional cheese, and always a hint of spice. A signature dish is emadachi, a flavorful concoction of vegetables with deceited chilies cooked in yak milk cheese, sourced from their distinctive Himalayan yak. Yak milk itself is a favorite among Bhutanese, with these high-altitude creatures serving as constant companions and resources for the locals. With such rich cultural and culinary offerings, the allure of Bhutan grows stronger. Who's ready to accompany you? Share your thoughts. Until next time, farewell to the hustle and bustle of countries plagued by pollution, police, and corruption.